Hi, this is Katherine Kowalczyk. I am the director of NH Docs, and with me today I have Samir Kumsuya, who is the director of Wald Citizen. And thank you very much for your film. It is quite an adventure. Um, and I know you are a filmmaker and a traveler, but I have to ask which one came first? <laughs> Hi, uh, Catherine, and hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, what came first? Filmmaking came first, actually. Mm -hmm. Then adventurers. <laughs> Adventure, yeah. So, so how did you make that leap to, uh, to being an adventurer and then saying, I'll, I'm going to make a film about this while I try to travel? Well, actually, the funny thing that uh, traveling for me started as a way to, you know, like uh, to leave the worries of filmmaking behind. Like I, I work all the time and then I want to go for an adventure to forget about filmmaking. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, uh, I like when I started, uh, like I first like started traveling like um, like to visit my friends and stuff like that. And then uh, when I started wanting to, like actually to backpack and started seeing more and more how complicated it is, I said, okay, why not to make a film about it actually, instead of just uh, complaining inside my head about these frustrations, I start making a film about it. And then, yeah, the film developed and became something way more than these frustrations and stuff like that. Did the filmmaking um, help or, or was it harder to, to actually try to get places while you were a filmmaker? Did it become burdensome as you backpack or, or was it just part of, the, part of the whole deal? That's a good question. Um, it was a burden, but I'm not sure if... If, I mean, like, technically, it was hard to, you know, carry the camera and stuff like that. Um, but also, I was struggling with some, uh, like, w with the problem of uh, not knowing when it's actually, uh, I don't want to say a real life, but it's like, when it's actually part of the film or something that I have to figure out myself, like, if this is, like, uh, the, a real life struggle that I have to figure out or it's a plot in the movie. That was like the whole, actually that was uh, the biggest problem and that why like, I mean in the end it was a, a good thing that it took so long to, f to finish this movie and film it over three years. Um, it was part of this problem because I did not, because I mean the film was part of uh, it, it, the film was a research it, not, it wasn't like i did not write what i want to do and then went do it it was like i said i go for this adventure for three years and see what happens and make a film about what happens and yeah and that was the, the like the struggle of figuring out what what actually my real personal struggle in real life or this is part of the film and, and Eventually, I figured it out. So, and then you you ended up bringing people from that you met all back to Palestine, and that was really amazing to me. Not only the struggle to get out, but to to get your friends in, and I didn't realize that it was so difficult to to actually travel to Palestine. Yeah, actually, before the film and everything, uh, I had uh, one of my friends um, from Poland who, like, he got banned for 10 years. Uh, he had, uh, like, he used to work in Jerusalem and he had a working visa and everything was fine. And then one, one day he decided to go for his friend's birthday back in Poland for two weeks and come back. And when he came back, they... They told them. They told him, you know, you are banned for ten years because you are uh, like a threat to the security. But uh, but what they mean threat to the security is that he knows Palestinians. That's a problem. Uh, wow. 
the thing is, it's not hard to travel to Israel if you go like with a with a tour or something like that. But if you like, if you raise a little bit of suspicion that you know Palestinians or you are going to to Palestine, um, that's when the trouble starts. And yeah, so uh, like apart from uh, so Sophia Sophie from the film. I had personal experience with my friends being denied the uh, entry and coming here. And it was luckily that Maxime and Sophia <laughs> managed to come here uh, without, without trouble, which was great. <laughs> so uh, have you shown this film in Palestine yet? Yeah, uh, it was uh, shown uh, uh, as part of uh, um, a film festival we have here, the only f film festival we have in Palestine, it's called Palestine Cinema Days. Uh, and it was received very well. <laughs> I was kind of uh, um, anxious about it because, you know, I've been traveling for so long and like I did not know how people would react to such a film that's not directly about, you know, political struggles in, in Palestine itself. It was more of a global issue. So I was like, how would they perceive it? And it was like, um, they, they thought it was a great film, actually. And there was a lot of actually uh, foreigners, like volunteers and international people who came to see the film. And they were impressed as well because they could, uh, like, uh, they could actually relate to the people who get denied and stuff like that. And so I think we're having um, the U.S. premiere for you. Um, yes. And I'm not sure how you feel about that. But has it been shown in Israel? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't think, I'm not sure how, like, I'm not sure, if, like, there are, so, like, big film festivals in Israel, but I'm not sure if they are interested in these kind of films and, like, I think, like, yeah, I mean, like, because um, there is this kind of, uh, like, uh, and I don't want to say it as a conflict, but this, like, um, Palestinians usually don't show films in Israel because it's, it's part of, you know, uh, like a political stance, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, I, I mean, like, in the end, films must be see, uh, shown to everybody. Yes. And it must, like, actually, especially the, this film must be shown to Israeli people because they, they, they can't see what's happening. Because we cannot just, you know, make them obscured about what's happening in Palestine because they don't know, actually. And that's part of the problem. That's, that's part of why the wall is there. Because, it, like, it just they don't know what's happening here. So they just see what's happening uh, here through the media, which is... <laughs> obviously unfair uh, representation. But to be participating in like film festivals or, you know, um, official entities, that's part of the state of Israel. I, I personally would refuse that. But if the film goes online, I would very much be happy for it to be seen by the Israelis. So we'll you see what happens. <laughs> You use the wall and you show the wall a lot and, and it's a, a harsh symbol. And unfortunately in America, we also have decided to build a wall to keep people out. Um, but you also are able to show how you can break through that wall, at least in personal relationships and is that part of what you wanted to really show is, is those, those very personal and inter, in, individual relationships that can break that barrier down? Exactly, that's the whole point of the movie. It's uh, like, in the end, whatever politics says, whatever the media says, whatever walls and borders we have, in the end, it's the, like, in the end it's, we as humans are gonna break these walls through our personal day-to-day -day, like you know connection and which was portrayed in friendship in my movie like friendship 
breaks all borders. Like, I, I, like you don't need to think of this person that uh, like he has this passport, he has this privilege, he has this skin color or whatever or this nationality, or like in the end, he's your friend or she's your friend. And, and that's what I wanted to show that in the end, these uh, personal relationships transcends borders, but in the end, <laughs> uh, borders all, all the time and politics and bureaucracy comes and, you know, make this hard, like make this personal connection harder. And I make the argument that they want it to be like this because they want to keep the walls because the walls are, beneficial for for the ones in power or politics or whatever the status quo is what's i know i know you've made a, a bunch of shorts since then um are you working on any feature length films at this point at this point no um actually i just started uh, producing online content uh, since the beginning of the quarantine in March um, because I thought that maybe instead of spending like you know years making one feature film I can make many shorts and you know reflection videos or video essays or whatever you're gonna call them uh, in a short period of time and reaching you know like more people through this online thing but uh, yeah it's not that easy it's, it's very hard to get like you know um, followers or subscribers or whatever uh, it's not easy but yeah it's a different challenge and you can see the results immediately like you just you upload the video and you start seeing the reactions and stuff like that but with uh, feature films um, yeah, I mean, I will maybe uh, next year I'll start working on a new one, like, uh, because I, I miss these kind of long-term projects and <laughs> thinking about uh, developing, like, big ideas and big, big concepts. Yeah. Do you have a, a specific subject matter? For now, no, but... Uh, it will come. I mean, I have lots of ideas in the drawer, so I'll just develop one of them. I mean, I, this film is so personal, and I feel like we, we all watching it get to know not only you, but some of your friends that you meet, um, and that's wonderful. Was there any place you really wanted to go and you weren't able to go to meet people? Uh, <laughs> there was uh, a funny thing that happened, but I, I wanted to go to Tierra del Fuego in uh, like the, the southernmost uh, tip of the earth. It's in, in Argentina. Um, it's called the end of the world. So I wanted like to make like a, you know like a sequence where I go to the end of the world with a Palestinian passport, but. <laughs> Um, the, the only way I can go, like the, 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 like the idea was to hitchhike from Buenos Aires because I have a friend there and like to hitchhike to Terra del Fuego. But the problem was um, um, that there are like a small river uh, between like the mainland of Argentina and Terra del Fuego. And this river belongs to Chile. So if I get a visa to Argentina, I cannot go <laughs> like through the like uh, driving to that place because I need to exit Argentina, enter this bridge that belongs to Chile, and then enter again to Argentina. But I cannot enter Chile this bridge because this bridge <laughs> needs a different needs a Chilean visa. So I was like, what the hell? I don't I don't want to go even uh, <laughs> because also the Argentinian visa it was so complicated to obtain. Uh, it's it's more complicated than the European one and stuff like that for some reason I don't know why they ask lots of things and they ask for like uh, I need to get some papers from the intelligence that I'm uh, <laughs> that I'm uh, you know like uh, 
white listed citizen and stuff like that and i was like what what the hell it's, it's too much of like humiliation i don't want to do it so i ended up going to ecuador because you know i changed the idea of from going to the end of the world to actually going to a place that welcomes me without all of these hassles you know and yeah it paid off uh, i'm glad i went to ecuador <laughs> Do you have any desire to go, I, I know we're all in quarantine now, but to go backpacking as soon as this quarantine is lifted? Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> as you know from the film, I have lots of international friends and they keep sending me videos and pictures and talk to me about <laughs> their lives and, uh, you know, they are hiking and sending me pictures of mountains and rivers and stuff like that and it's like uh, I wish I can go now but uh, yeah I mean uh, after this quarantine uh, ends I think that would be the first thing to do because I mean like the problem is that I said okay I'll, I'll like um, 2019 when I finished filming I said okay 2019 will be only for editing this film and when I finish this film, it will go to festivals and I'll get to travel. And then now you see, like, all festivals are going online and there's no traveling, you know. So there's been a long time not traveling. But Has it been, okay. uh, we, we should appreciate whatever happening today. Where, where else has it been screened so far? Um, in the UK. Um, yeah, the international premiere was in Ireland and uh, there was uh, another film in the UK that got postponed to next year. <laughs> um, what else? Um, it will be screened in Italy in another film festival. I cannot say the name because it's still, uh, it's, they did not announce officially. <laughs> um, what else? What else? There's another fi film festival in the States, but <laughs> the name got <laughs> out of my head. Um, anyway, yeah, there's another fi festival in the States. So is, any is anyone that, any of your friends that you got to meet able to go to a film festival and see it? Where they live? No. <laughs> it's, uh, for some reason, like, uh, yeah, I have no friends in Ireland, for example. Um, and yeah, the one in the UK, actually, there was a couple of friends who wanted to see it, but, uh, you know, they, they will wait for next year. And uh, in Connecticut, I'm not sure if, I mean, I have, um, you know, people that knows my friends. And I was like encouraging my friends to tell them to, to watch the film online at your festival. So we will see if they will uh, answer the call. Hopefully. I think it's it's such an amazing film. I've seen it several times now and sometimes I almost get frustrated for you <laughs> watching the film. Um, but it was a real eye opener for me. I mean we in America we take advantage of our freedom and sometimes we forget that other people can't just pick up their passport and go wherever they want to. Um, and to see you just have so much, put so much effort into traveling and to, like it, it takes so long to travel for you and you, you really have to plan for months and months just to be able to do it. But I also really enjoyed showing, seeing where you lived. I mean, there is a, a very beautiful, in beautiful shots of, of Palestine, other than the wall. Obviously, um, that part's a very harsh reality, but I appreciate all those images of Palestine too, and all the I was sitting around the campfire and everything. It's, it's a lovely place to see. Um, and we don't yeah. often get to see that positive side of Palestine. You know, most of what Americans see is 
negative. It's from a different viewpoint, and I appreciate that very personal view you've shown us of your home land. It's it's really wonderful. That that's great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how how do you feel? I mean, obviously, because most of the news that comes out is is biased towards Israel. So, were you really trying to? make that a point to show how how beautiful and how personal Palestine can be? Or is that just an afterthought? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, like, uh, there's a, like, I mean, like, I was uh, at some point, bef like, before making this film, I was living in, in Madrid. And, uh, like, one day, like, you know, we were watching TV and there was like uh, a news with these like masked people and people with guns and stuff like that. I was like, you know, watching, like wondering what, where this is. And then it turns out it's, it's referring, they are referring to Palestine. And I was like, like, I've actually in my life, I only saw these kind of people once during the, the war, like in, in, in beginning of the 2000s. It's not the daily life, like you, you never see these kind of things, like it's, that's not, like that. this is so far from the reality. And I was like, like imagine that I, a Palestinian, didn't know that this is Palestine. Imagine someone that never been here, how would they think about Palestine? And like, so I, I want, I, like, I thought like, of course, they will, when someone says the word Palestine, they will think of conflict, war, people with guns and stuff like that. And, and like everyone is Muslim and stuff like, like But, you know, I'm from a Christian family and I, me, myself, I'm non-believer. And there are lots of, you know, diversity in here and lots of, you know, like we have a life here, you know, with all of its complexities and diversities. We have bars, we have parties, we have like, like... I mean, we are under occupation and all of that stuff, but we also have a life and culture and stuff like that. Like th these, all of these things goes like, uh, you know, like, and like they j the media just don't, uh, like they erase all of this. And it's, it's like, a, it's heartbreaking for me uh, because like when, when I was, when I used to travel and I say I'm Palestinian, I'm Palestinian. They, I know that the people who meet me think of me like these images on the TV. So I wanted to to make this film to show real life, you know, like uh, to show that actually I'm a human. I have feelings. I have frustrations. I have love affairs and stuff like that. It's not just uh, holding guns and wearing black masks. And so yeah, I mean that was part of the like a huge part of the film is to show the human side of things, you know, not, not just what people see in, in the media. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and that's what I wanted also to say, that the film is great that shows these kind of things, but when you actually come here, like when people come visit us, or us actually visiting other people in the world, we actually get introduced to these kind of simple daily life things and culture and make personal connections and friendships uh, that's what's gonna <laughs> make peace in the world or that's what's gonna create understanding and compassion um, and un unfortunately the media is doing the opposite of that well, thank you so much for speaking to me today um, and thank you for your film well the citizen is one of my favorite films this year and keep making films and keep in touch with us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>